Um, so yes, getting your source code into text files is wonderful. And then your problems begin. And, uh, so uh, Morton talked a bit about Git. And uh, so Git is a distributed source code management system. You can work on it on your own. How many people here know what Git is and use Git? OK. And some don't use Git. Is anybody not using Git? A couple. OK. So you know, Git's where you can keep your source code. It's a source code management system. It's distributed. You can work on it on your own PC, but it really comes to uh, uh, you know, the top when you're, when you're collaborating with other people and using something like GitHub so you can all, all stay in touch and keep track of stuff. Um, and uh, Git is, is, takes a little getting used to if you're not used to it. And uh, it has a huge number of commands, a huge number of parameters. And it can be, in a word, overwhelming. Um, and uh, it, it takes a little time just to get used to it. The most important thing that I found was to, uh, well, the more you know about Git, uh, it's the, if you know a lot about Git, you kind of have a problem because it means that you're really not doing what you should be doing, which is getting your work done and getting stuff out the door. So if you do know a lot of Git and you know all the Git commands and all the parameters, you're probably not a very productive person. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what I like to do is just find a very few sets of commands, wrap them up with the right parameters, so I only need to know two or three things during the normal course of my day or my week, and I can get work done. Um, and uh, a name for that is just to have a Git workflow. It's how do you make changes? How do you get them out? How do you co coordinate with other people when you have a conflict? How do you resolve the conflict? How do you version your software? How many branches do you have? Do you branch? When do you branch? When do you merge? Do you um, rebase? All these things. And it's, it's, it's insane. So, uh, and I'm not too bright, and I can't keep too many things in my head, so I have to have a few commands that do some things. Um, and so that's what I'm going to show you. Um, I have a, I'm going I'm, I'm to open a project here, uh, which I already did there, called uh, my stats, which is a trivial little project I created this morning, and I threw in a couple functions, and it's already up on Git. Uh, I think I have, I only want to show two screens today. We'll move back and forth, nothing else. And so I have that, and let's just make sure this thing is, is live. I can move around. Am I connected? Yeah, okay. And uh, where was that? Okay. So that's all good. Oh, how come I can't go back there? Oh, back. Okay, so this, little, this is the project up on GitHub, and you can see I've done four, I've got some commits that I just started this morning, and uh, some, some dummy data, and we're going to look around and see what happens with this particular, whoops, this particular Git workflow. So let's go back to code there. Okay. Um, so what is a workflow? Well, we talk, you know, it's, it's basically order and a, and a procedure for getting all your work done. Um, there are many, if you, were to, if you were to Google Git workflow, there are many Git workflows. Some of the diagrams for these Git workflows are, uh, what's the word, Rube Gold, Goldberg-esque, I guess. Uh, and if you look at them, you're like, oh, I can't, can't possibly keep this. Straight. So there's one that I found called, uh, I think it's called OneFlow. You can Google that. Some guy came up with something called OneFlow. And I thought, well, that's good. And I took OneFlow, which is a very simple workflow, and I even simplified that. So I have something I'm just calling it AcreFlow, which is named for Acre, uh, which is a project management system, which is simply a level on top of something that you've seen before conceptually. We, we don't use Link, but it's this. Same, same exact concept. So Link is great. You can, you can coordinate stuff with the disk to your, to your session. But it doesn't, um, it doesn't encapsulate. It's, it's relatively low level. So I've opened a project. And a project is a folder full of code, like you saw in, in, in the previous demonstration. But a project is also additional assets and some metadata about your project. 
because there's things that you need to know about. It, you know, there's no project that's going to have just some APL code. There's going to be some DLL in there. There's going to be something else. You're going to need some things. You're also going to need to version it. You're going to need to keep track of versions. So an acre project is just a folder full of, a full of APL code that is linked and um, additional assets and some metadata. So I've opened a project, I wrote, read it in, read it into a namespace called MyStats and um, into a namespace called with my name. And you'll notice that, that is the same as the URL up here. And that's, that's useful that we're, that we're using a structure that mimics Git. We've organized our projects into groups or accounts and then the name within the project. So if I have, that comes into play if we start sharing things or using other projects in our projects. But we're gonna to focus today on just on a basic workflow. So let me go back. So I'm in this project. I stepped into the main namespace of this project. It's called main. There are some functions in there. And this is just a little stats package I'm writing here. So I'm gonna, um, well, we're going to show some user commands here. There's some, there's some Acre Tools commands. Uh, there's a bunch in here. Probably don't need all of them. We're going to look at two or three of them, which is all I really use. Um, the first one is, is that anytime I'm going to do some work, I create a new feature branch. And my model, this workflow model, has basically one branch, the master branch. It's the only permanent, long-lived branch the only branch that exists in perpetuity. Anytime I do any work, I never do it on the master branch. The first thing I do is I go in and I create a new feature branch. And if I don't know what I'm going to do, I might just call it work in progress. If I know what I'm going to do, I might name the branch bug fix one or bug fix two or something. Um, when you're early on in a project and you haven't even got out of version zero yet, you're often just hacking around. And in fact, you don't have to use a branch. You could do it right on the master. But any, as soon as you get to version one and you're actually concerned about releasing things, you, know, you, you, you always want to work on a new branch. It's just easier, cleaner. And I'm not going to, uh, everybody here, know, most people know what Git is. I'm not going to go into details about what branching is. I'm going to assume you kind of know that um, and, and, and just move on from there. So this created the branch and we're in the branch and it brought in the code for that branch. Right, so, uh, and we can, the functions are gonna be pretty much the same. And I can make an enhancement. Say, let's say I wanna add a product uh, function. So I can go in, create a new function, just throw in, oh, let me get my uh, keyboard work in there. Uh, and uh, bu -bu -bu the time to reduction of omega, add a product function. Yep. Okay, so it wrote that to disk, so we know that that got saved. And now I want to uh, commit this thing. Well, I'm on a branch, and uh, this workflow encourages you to take a branch out and do your work on it. Now, if I go to lunch right now, I can show, before I step away from my computer, I might want to see what changes I have made. So it shows me that I have committed, I have an uncommitted change and no committed changes on this branch. This is handy. These spit them out, the changes in your, you know, it obviously as an APL object, so I can just go back in there and highlight it and edit it if I want to. I may want to commit this change, so I can commit. And this commit here requires no commit message. This is a meaningless save point or a trivial commit on a branch. And the idea here is that you might commit four or five times on this branch, but the individual commits are not meaningful. It is only the final commit, and all of these commits are going to get squashed into a single meaningful commit when you merge this branch back to your master. Um, I can kind of see what's going on in here, and I see that, okay, since I branched here, I have just done this little save 28 seconds ago. I might go in and say, hey, I need to do one more little thing here so I can edit my product function and I can put a comment in. And 
I can commit again. These are just kind of, again, me relatively meaningless commits, but they can be useful if you're working on something for a number of hours or days. So let's commit that. And we can take a look at our commits. So I have these two commits that are stacked up here on this branch called work in progress. And it's all good. Now I run my tests. This thing all works. It's all very well and good. So I'm going to um, merge it to the feature branch. No, mer I'm going to merge feature branch, this feature branch to the master branch. And when I do that, it just then throws away the feature branch. All right, so it merges it, and it's going to—it's going to probably push it up to uh, push it up to uh, GitHub too. And if we look at our um, branches now, oops, we just have one one branch, the master. And we can look at our commits again on that branch, and we'll see that these two. Uh, oh, did I not put a? Uh, yeah, it allowed that, huh? Oh, I really shouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, if you don't, it just puts the name of the branch in. Okay, that's a default. It shouldn't really do that. It should probably tell you you have to put one in because that's, that's obviously not useful. All right. Um, the next one, I'll do, we'll do one in a second. I'll actually put a message in. So if the other idea with this workflow is that you do not commit to the master unless you pass all your tests. So the master branch always has, if you look at this history, so that I started this project, and it probably goes back a little more. Let's just put in a, uh, a zero here. The general idea here is, so I started this thing six hours ago, and I threw in uh, some couple of functions. And then I go, th I go through this, and I can fix bugs, add features, make enhancements, do what I'm going to do. Every time I make a commit to the master, it has to pass all the tests, and the master is always deployable. Okay, It always runs, it always works. Um, now, you may not do a release every time you do a commit. As you can see here this morning, I did a release a couple of times, and those are release branches. We'll get to that in a second. That's the only other type of branch that I have. I have in the workflow, there's a, there's a a feature branch for doing a feature, and then there's a release branch, which is completely automated that you never touch, that is created and deleted immediately once it's merged into the master. And um, yeah, so uh, that's the history of it, and we can see that we can release from time to time. What you should be able to release the master a new version anytime you want, because everything always passes the test by definition if it's on the master. So I could do a release now and just add this new feature. Um, and to do that, I just do release new feature, uh, excuse me, uh, blah, blah, release new version. If you don't give it an argument, it's going to bump up. I'm on version, you can see this 62 minutes ago, I released version 0.0.3. If I do not give this thing a argument, it is going to simply bump up the minor version. I could ask it to bump up the, ma the, the major version or the um, minor version. Excuse me, it'll bump, bump up the patch, which is the last digit. So if I do this, release a new version, it creates a branch called the, uh, it's going to throw out probably more than I need to in the screen here. Don't get, it just throws out some stuff from Git. But it creates a release branch, which it, it then merges uh, and bumps up the version number. In the, in the configuration file, we have to keep track of versions, and then it's going to merge it to the master. It's going to tag it and push it up to Git. So I now have version four, and I can go to GitHub and somewhere, right? And we can see if I refresh here, probably. Uh, I should have a fifth release, and there it is, okay? Notice it automatically put in release notes, which is simply a list of the commit messages for each commit. Um, and nothing more, nothing less. Actually, a little bit less, because if you, if you prefix a commit message with a tilde, it will not include it in your release messages. So it's a very simple mechanism. Nothing, people have large systems and large specs for how you do this kind of stuff with all sorts of things for mapping your commit messages to release messages. And just went with the absolute simplest thing. Um, in addition, 
so GitHub, for those of you who know, gives you these two for free, the source code and, and, and uh, um, the zip and the tar there. But uh, out of the box, um, this framework, Acre Tools, will create what a, your project in a workspace as well. Okay, it'll load all the code, fix it in a workspace, bundle it with the assets that it requires, and give it to you as a zip file, and that's my stats dash application. In addition, you can set a configuration parameter if you have additional, if you, if you let's say you're building a Windows app, and your Windows app uh, requires something, you can put a little callback function in, so when I do the release, it builds any other release assets that you have and puts them right there. But this is a built-in, this release asset here, my stats dash application, is something that's only useful to somebody who has APL, okay? But it has everything in it that you need to actually run this application, run this project or application, and to actually play around with it or exercise the API in it. Um, okay, so we put out a release. All, that's all well and good. And when did I start? Quarter of and I have till 2.30? Is that right? Okay. So... Uh, life is not that easy, right? The whole point of this is we're going to have somebody else making a change and, on this system, and we need to worry about conflicts. And that somebody who's making the change might be you, because let's say I'm working on a, pro on a new feature that's going to take me a couple hours or maybe a day. So I come in the morning, and let's see where we are here. So I, have, I come in the morning, and I create a new branch. I want a new feature branch. Um, and uh, I'll just call it again, work in progress. And I come in here, and I'm adding a, uh, let's see what we got here. I'll add a new um, uh, min, max, sum, product, what else can I do? Uh, average, I'll do something, average. So this in this thing, we're adding a new function average, and... Uh, Yeah, yeah, don't, let's not talk about them. I'm divided by. Okay, there's probably a better way to do that too, but that's good for now. No trains yet, right, all right. Okay, average. And as I'm working on my new project or my new feature here, I get the call, urgent bug fix. What do I do? Okay, easy. All I'm gonna do is new feature branch. Okay, now even though I'm sitting on this branch here, which is a work in progress, which has a, a totally, um, you know, I've who knows what I've changed? Well, actually, I do know, I can see what I've changed, but I've changed a bunch of things. Um, and uh, I wanna now work on the, on the master branch to fix a critical bug. So if I do that, I create a new feature branch, and it won't let me because I have these uncommitted changes, and that's fine, so I'm gonna commit on my feature branch. And now I'm gonna create a new feature branch. I didn't even give it a name. A new feature branch for an urgent bug fix. We'll just call it UBF. And when I'm doing my urgent bug fix, let's say uh, I go in and I'm going to, um, going to make this sum function. Let's do it with the product function. I'm gonna make the product function do something here if I get some text data. Let's just, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna put in a little guard there, make a little change, okay? This is the product function, right? Okay, doesn't even have to work. I make this bug fix, run my tests, and I merge this feature branch, and I say, uh, what do I say? I say, uh, what was this, a critical, critical bug fix, okay? What's that? No, probably not. So it, it would tell me. It would tell me. I think if I didn't, let's commit that. And thank you. Uh, it would just say you can't merge a branch with with a dirty uh, index or you know with with uh, uncommitted stuff. And release. Uh, no, I'm not releasing a version. All I'm doing is merging this feature branch. And now I should give this a decent name, right? Which is uh, urgent bug fix or fix bug. Number whatever, number uh, 12, okay, right? Now this probably left me on the master branch. Whoops, let's wait till that gets fixed. See where, where we are. And I can now, I fixed that bug, now I'm gonna get back to work, okay? And I'm gonna get back to work 
on the feature branch, so I check out the feature branch. Um, the branch names are automatic here, uh, and I took this from this one flow thing, so I add feature slash on it, and if it's a release branch, it's release slash. These, they're really meaningless, they don't really, and if you don't have any other branches, and the only master branch is the, you only have one permanent branch, you really don't need that, and I might remove that. It's just, it's unnecessary, because there again is, is only one permanent branch. The master and the release branches are uh, disposable immediately. You don't even, they, they don't even exist as far as, as the programmer is concerned. They're, they're, um, so, uh, anyway, I'm gonna open up that, or check that branch out. And now, I have a, I've created a little problem for myself, so, if I, uh, if I show the commits here, you'll notice that my, my branch has this save point uh, with that commit number there, and it's sitting right on top of this release, but, I kn but we know that somebody else got in there, and they did something. There's actually another, well, we can look at that. If we check out the master, and we look at the commit history, we have a problem, right? We have, a, we have a bug fix. I need to get my commit on top of this. I cannot put my commit on top of this thing because somebody's done some work here. How is that resolved? There's a, there, there, there's a variety of ways of resolving this in Git, and I use rebase. Um, so what is rebase? Well, all you're doing is saying, when I created my branch, it was here. This is where we were in time. So what I want to do is I want to find all of these commits up here that are past this, and I want to insert them below my commit that I'm trying to put onto this thing. Or another way of saying it, I want to check out again what the current master is and put all of my changes on top of that. Either way, you can think about it either way, right? We just want to make sure that work done before me is in there and that I've looked at it and rerun my tests, right? Because even if there's no conflict or there's no problems with the merge, when I take that work, even if we've been working in totally different areas of the system, there could be a problem. So uh, let me get back to, uh, where was I? I want to get back to the feature branch. And I'm going to just try and merge this thing. Merge feature branch uh, with, um, what did I do in here? I docked, uh, I, uh, I added, a, uh, added a guard, okay. And it's gonna say, no, uh, it's not rebased to the mass, it's not gonna allow me to do it. So I'm going to rebase it. I'm gonna rebase the feature branch. Now, in this case, there was absolutely no merge conflict, so we're good, okay? And now I can, I don't think I need to commit here. I think I just should be able to run this right now. Uh, merge feature branch, add it to guard. And that works. And if we look at our commits, oops. I got my commit on top of the intermediate commit in the right spot, and we're good. All right, let's do a real quick, uh, what happens when we have a merge conflict? And uh, I'll put out another release, and we'll see what's going on. So branches, let's see where we are, show branches. Um, before I do that, these commands are extremely, for those of you who know Git, these are extremely thin com calls to the git command line. Uh, it's just picking the parameters that were appropriate for the workflow, and uh, there's not a lot going on there at all under the covers. Um, it's really just how organized, getting yourself organized with exactly the tools that you need to get what you need to get done in your workflow, and, and so you don't have to think about it. Um, so let's just do a quick, um, all right, uh, so I'll do another new feature branch. 
work in progress. And uh, we'll also then immediately check out, uh, do a new feature branch for another urgent bug fix. And we'll fix a bug. We'll go into, um, quickly go into the product. And this guy's going to say, ooh, that should be 160. So I'm going to do something there. So uh, then we commit this. And then we merge it. And we'll say we fixed uh, bug number something. Then we have to go back to our uh, work that we left undone, right? Uh, which is, uh, what are we left undone? Oops. Uh, check out feature work in progress. Oops, do that. And we're going to go in here, we're going to purposely create a conflict. So I'm a little smarter than that guy who ch changed it. We'll do something like uh, zero equals, is it that? 80 mod, is that right? Something like, something like that. 10? Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, this is the problem. Ba -ba -ba -ba. So we've create a conflict. What's that? Comments. Yes, yes. Uh, comments are good, but please don't comment that you made a change on a certain date. <laughs> don't put that in there. Or who made the change. <laughs> yeah, leave, yeah, do not leave the old line of code. Do not put your name in there and do not put what you were doing. Um, so I can commit this. And if I try and merge this, merge feature branch, right, uh, with, um, I'm, I'm uh, enhancing the product function. Okay. Enhancing the product function. It's going to say no. We need to, re we need to rebase it. So it's telling me to rebase. And it's going to spill out more than I need to. This is all coming from, from Git. And, uh, but more importantly is it puts here what I need to look at. So it's telling me that the product function, there's a conflict. And if there were more, they'd be listed there with, with what the issues were. So I can take a look at this. And I go, oh, oh, oh OK. So I said, this is the right way to go here. Let me keep this one and get rid of that guy. Okay. And now it tells me that I need to, at the end there it said, if you're paying attention, manually merge and then run rebase continue. So I'm just going to hit rebase continue. And that's fine. And now this merge feature branch will work fine, I think. Yep. And then finally, everything's good. Let's, let's do a release. So we'll release a new version. And uh, at some point. Okay, version number five is out there on the interwebs. And there it is with all of our notes. So that is a very simple Git workflow. And everything that you all do is way too complicated and you can't use it. So you have to do something else. Um, you, this is a great workflow for when you are, uh, can release stuff, you know, at will. Um, and again, this might be on something that's below. You might have, obviously, if you're, for a, proj for a 
a final end user application that's going out, you might have additional release notes. This is not for that. This is, this is just to get you the core part of your, your APL code out there. Um, you can obviously, from what I've shown, you can easily put out new versions bumping up major, major, minor, or patches. You can also patch old versions. So you can check out version, if you're on version 5, you can check out version 4, and you can make a critical bug fix to version 4. Again, all on a single branch, but you have to make that bug fix again at the top for your main branch, for, for your, where, where you currently are. So while you can patch old versions, it is not, if, 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 you, if you're constantly, if you're trying to maintain two versions of the same software, it's not the flow for you. But it is fine if, in, in our case, we have one version, but we may have some critical customer on an older version, and they, you know, something critical now has changed, and I need to fix something, drop a new DLL in or something. That's fine. That all works well. Okay. Um, so while... Uh, while the workflow is not for everyone, um, there is, in, in any, any time you have a problem, and, and this comes up all the time in coding, uh, don't look for a solution to your problem. Ask yourself why you have the problem. And then try and not have the problem before you make a solution for your problem. And with Git and with source code management, and with many things in life, uh, that's a very good thing to do. Because every time you have a solution to a problem, if you make a solution to the problem in your code, you now have more code. Or you now have more, and so if you're constantly in a spot where you're worrying about, all, you have to have all these branches because you have to do this, because ask yourself, why are we doing that? And uh, maybe, you, maybe you don't need to, maybe you do. Um, so there is more to, the project concept here, that you have a project, is uh, in one sense extremely trivial, right? It's, it's just a folder with APL code. But if you don't have the vocabulary, you need to, I found that you need to have the vocabulary to discuss your project, and it's more than just a folder full of code. There is some configuration parameters in there, some, some things about where the stuff gets fixed in the namespace. There is some stuff about the version uh, and there may be stuff about things that your code depends on, dependencies, we're not gonna get into that today. Um, and uh, there is other stuff that you wanna bundle and treat as a unit. And so we call that a project. Uh, that's what I was working on here. And when I go out, when I come in in the morning at work, I open up a project. Um, behind the scenes, there's some link stuff going on, uh, but uh, I come in, and I don't really think about that. I think about my project. And I open up my project, and I do some work. I usually have five projects open, and I'm usually working on them all at the same time. And you can have as many projects open as you want. I work on, work on them all at the same time, and I do, if they're interdependent, I may release, uh, and I have, you know, project A depends on project B. I release, I see there's some issue, I can fix project B, run some tests, do a release, and then, uh, take advantage of that in Project A. Uh, so that is, uh, that's it. Um, any questions? I have some. My life. Michael. Yeah. So you said um, when you release a new version, it has to pass all the tests. Is that something you defined as an organizational must, or does the program somehow take care of it? The pro, yeah, in, th in this case, I mean, I am the organization, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, we, uh, the idea here is that you have a namespace in your project full of tests that you just run, and that it's the, whoever's project it is, it's their responsibility. We're not doing anything, uh, and the tests are all right there. There's no automation when it gets to the server like uh, Morton showed, where there's some tests that are being run by Jenkins or something like that. So we may get to that. So right now, it's the programmer. You write all your tests. They're in there. They're in a namespace uh, next to main somewhere, and they get run. They should get run, okay. right? There's no enforcement of that. Mm -hmm. All voluntary. Okay. Then you showed the merging, um, yes. which was nice. It was all in the function. But when you have um, l large functions and lots of differences, 
I, li I would like to use a third-party comparison tool. Is that is it possible to integrate that um, into I don't see this why, um, I don't see why command it would, workflow? I don't see why it wouldn't be. Um, in fact, the uh, for close observers there, you might notice that I fixed the merge problem in the function, yeah. but maybe it wouldn't be fixable at all, right? <laughs> so uh, ideally, what should pop up there is something else. And that could be a dialog edit box, just for a text for text editor, or it could be something much more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. So, mm. Okay. the answer is yeah. That should I don't see why it wouldn't be possible. And finally, I am personally concerned. Are you planning to compete with Tamstad now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think all that code started out in FlipDB anyway. But okay. <laughs> when you create a new feature branch, does it always branch off where you currently are, or does it branch off of the master? Off the master. Off the so master. it doesn't matter where you are, it always branches off the master. But of course, you can always run, you know, if you know Git, you can do whatever you want, right? And there's, in fact, there's a com one of the commands is run git command. So you just don't have to put the folder or the project, you just put the command that you want to run in git. So if you want to branch off of something else, um, you can do that. In fact, the branch function might, uh, because this is so thin on top, I just put in a feature here. Um, uh, where is it? Uh, uh, let me try this. This is also available as a API. Oh, it's 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 uh, what is it? New feature branch. So, in fact, I think it just defaults to the master if you don't put one in. But you can use this run git command, which is a really, again, a thin thing on top of git that'll do, will do whatever you want. So there's nothing, you know, there's so much in git. And I don't want to, this was not designed to be a heavy duty thing on top. Very light for just the commands that a certain type of shop needs to get the work done. Um, and uh, so it, I, I tend to always branch off the master. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So I mean, if you did want to go back and make a patch to version 0.03, uh, yeah. How would you do that? Is that easy? Uh, let's uh, let's look at. I'm actually going to show you this rather than do it because I didn't do it this morning and I haven't done that for a long time. Uh, where's it? Patch. Uh, yeah, hold on. Nice. Forgot the name of the command. That's how often I do that. Uh, I may not have exposed that in the API. Yeah, it's not in there. Um, I can show you that. Yeah. Uh, basically, what you do is you, you check out uh, a old version, right? You make your change, and you put that on the top, and then you immediately, and you tag that as, as a patch for 1.0 dot whatever dot one let's say yeah. and then you take what was the top of the th of the commits and put that on top of that so that you're back to back to where you want to be okay um, I can probably if you want to take a quick look well, at the, I can show you the the, uh, the code in there but I can't I don't think I can run it right now I just wanted an idea of how yeah. how because it, that's sort of the only thing that I immediately feel I right. would miss because so it's it's, it's absolutely life, I, I doable. Back and patch it's absolutely those. doable, and it what happens is is when you, if you show the. Uh, so when you do it, and you go, you know, you grab this release here. Uh, well, you wouldn't patch that one, but um, if you found one that you wanted to patch, uh, unless we had negative one or something, you would dot. You would in increase the patch. It puts that commit on the top. And now you have a problem, right? Because you don't want, that's not where you're, that's not, should not be the top of your master, 
right? So then you have to put another, you have to, you have to merge it again, and there's a git command that says, hey, I don't care what the hell's in the other thing, take yeah. my commit and put it on top. And, and you're, then you're, you're back where you're you are. You're sure you don't want to make it possible to start a branch back there and? Well, you could do whatever you want. There's nothing prohibits you from doing that. Absolutely nothing. You want to start a branch and keep it going. I don't want to have any other feature branches out there. So, uh, 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 version branches. But there's absolutely yeah. nothing that stops you from doing that, right? Yeah. If you wanted to have master, the only thing that's stopping you from doing that is that you're just going to create more problems for yourself in the future, I think. <laughs> but yeah, but that's the price you pay for having an installed user base. That yes. cause, it causes you more problems, problems. in the future. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right, you're right. <laughs> but yeah, you could just branch, and if you want to have master, and then you, wanna, you want to cut a version, you can do that, but then you just need to have rules in place for how, do you, how you deal with that. So you're extending the, the, the workflow. Which is fine. Nothing wrong yeah. with that. But I mean, There's ideally, we would all use, you know, I'd like to use your workflow. So right. I'd, I'd rather have you ha add another little user command that says, you know, uh, create a new uh, uh, version branch. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, I, and, and, yeah. Uh, anyway. You could probably convince me to do that. Okay. Oh, good. So I want to know how you handle utility namespaces. So if I have several utility namespaces that are used in my project, right. but they are also used in other developers' projects, yep. do you treat utility namespaces as their own project? Yes. And how do you ensure that they are loaded with your, your master? And how do you... Um, uh, work with different versions of dialogue. So if I have a utility that I've made a change and it depends on a certain version of dialogue, I know you said, uh, will you cover dependencies in some other topic? <laughs> yes. The answer is yes to all of that. So um, if you have the, the whole point of projects, of having projects, is so that you can carve up your work into meaningful sub-projects. So Correct. you carve out your utilities, and just like I have Paul Mansour um, stats, I have Paul Mansour utilities. It's another project, mm -hmm. and stats can have its in, in its configuration file a dependency requirement that says I need to use Paul Mansour utilities. Mm -hmm. So when you open the stats project for development, it will open the utilities project as well. And in addition, it will use namespace reference injection to put a reference, if you so choose, a reference to your utility namespace into every namespace in your main project. So that you can just type, and the, there can be an alias. So if you want to type, uh, I have a utility namespace called utilities, but I want to type u.delete trailing blanks. That's it. So I can just make an alias for that in the configuration file and type u anywhere, any namespace, I can type u dot delete trailing blanks, and I get autocomplete, and it's there, and we're all using the same version. Now, there's a version in there as well. So if you have a version of your utility namespace version 1, and version 1 has been tested and works with Dialog 17, uh, you know that's a, just a fact of version 1. It works with Dialog 17. You can put in in your dependency that you require version one of the utility namespace. Dialog 18 comes out, somebody says, hey, I want to use all these new operators. They go in there, they start doing trains and operators, and they say this is going to obviously not work for version, for people who are not on 17. I'm going to bump it up to 2.0, and other people can say, hey, I can use 2.0 because I'm on that, right? Um, yeah, so that's, but it would be nice. It would yeah. be nice to have a way. I don't know in your config file or something else that says I want this version of the uh, utility namespace version two, but right. it's using dialog. Right. 18. I, I, it's okay. A, yeah, that's interesting. And I was wondering whether I mean the, the version itself can encapsulate its requirements. That's why you have a version. And the question is, if a version should, if there should be another configuration parameter for your project that says a maximum dialog version. Possibly. I, I, I prefer to have one version thing, and the version is the version, 
but maybe, I don't know, we should talk about that. Yeah, I, okay. I, I understand where you're going. Yeah. Simple is better, yeah. okay, but there also needs to be that kind of transparency. Right. That somebody just looking and saying, okay, I see three versions of this utility out Which there. one do I get? Which one do right. I choose? <laughs> right. Okay, based on the version of dialogue that I know I need to deploy for my project because right. I have to do this urgent bug fix. It that... really wouldn't be hard. I mean, it, it's trivial to put the parameter in. Natural and, point, yes. uh, Obviously, when you then loaded, if you loaded a version, if you asked for a version that did not go with your, with your interpreter for development purposes, it could signal an error and say, I'm not going to load that version. Correct. Right? I, would like, I would like that okay. because that is right. was my concern with text files. We start loading things in. If you load, if you uh, right now are working with a workspace and you try to load something that was saved, it'll, tell you, it, it can't it'll tell you that it can't. Okay, but with the text file concept, that mm -hmm. doesn't happen. And so that is my concern that you, if you don't have sufficient testing, there'll be nothing to tell you that. Um, this right. is going to be a, a problem Later for on. your end user, <laughs> okay, at some point when they get, yep. you know, a crash. I don't think it's hard to do that, and I think you can do it, and you don't even have to require it. Uh, it could be just optional. You, if you put in the required dialog version, it would just check. Yep. So I think it's trivial. Okay. I'm on it. Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you.